normal amount of oxygen into the blood. I do triathlon competitively and as you can probably imagine in that sport you beat yourself up a lot, you run a lot, you swim a lot, you bike a lot, I've done Ironman, I've done sprints, I've done everything. And I started using the hyperbaric chamber for recovery from races and it was amazing. But not just the physical demands were alleviated by uh, hyperbaric medicine, but also the fact that I study so much because now I'm currently in medical school, there's a clairvoyance that I, that I noticed when you come out of hyperbaric chambers that when you're searching for a word sometimes you know you kind of have like a brain fog like it's not there. I feel like after coming out of a chamber I would be able to find that word right away. And I'm currently in my last year of medical school at uh, Osteopathic Medical School in Northern California. And along this whole way, I've seen people's perceptions of hyperbaric medicines and the way people display it on TV. And there's obvious uses, uses for it that I've seen that the bends and the burn victims and stuff like that, that insurance covered it. But sometimes I feel like it becomes almost like elitist because it helps so many things, but so few people actually know how to implement it. And it's not going to make like any blockbuster drug will make so much money and I can just write a pill and someone can take this pill for the rest of their life. It actually takes labor to do hyperbaric medicine, but the results that I saw working at the Wellness Institute were very dramatic. Well, I, uh, yesterday I told my hairdresser that I said, whose daughter has a problem, uh, absolutely, you must do it. It will make her feel better. It will give her energy, etc., cetera, et cetera. It's just, it is the best treatment I have had, and I have tried everything. The oxygen treatments made me feel better. Uh, breathing deeper, feeling better. When I came out of the chambers, I felt alive, tingly. Uh, I could see what they call pinking up or red parts, pink parts on my body. There was, uh, I don't know how to describe this other than to say uh, a general feeling of wellness that, w that was occurring. Uh, if I had two a day for a couple of weeks, oh boy, <laughs> I could have gone out and you know fought bears, this sort of thing. Uh, it uh, also sharper, it was easier to read, retention was a lot better. I could, I could read perhaps three or four hours, technical stuff, and do okay. With this stuff, I waltz through it. I've got to four and five hours a day, in two hour bursts. All right, I talked to you earlier about protocol and treatments. The bags not being equal just to the, to the chambers because um, they can't maintain the same pressure. But you made a point to me about the end result being as dependent on the quality of the machine you use as it is on who establishes and sets the protocol. We talked about a lot of places there is one protocol. So it'll, it helps everybody, but it doesn't help everybody the same. It fits one really well, but here at the center, one of the big benefits that you explained to me is that you custom fit everybody's treatment to their condition. Is that really that big a deal? Yes, it's a big deal, and I'll tell you one of the reasons. Oxygen has been declared a drug by the FDA, and it's dosed as a drug. And you can't use a low-pressure chamber to dose it appropriately for all the conditions. We can use this chamber to dose almost anything in the medical arena. And dosage has to do with two things, two major things. Number one, time in the chamber, and number two, the depth that you go to. So this chamber or any of our chambers can go to a depth of three atmospheres, which will treat almost anything in the medical arena, uh, with the exception of a couple of things that uh, Russia, for example, goes to six and seven atmospheres. They have a whole hospital that does nothing but hyperbaric uh, treatment, which is incredible. But you wouldn't necessarily need to go to three atmospheres to treat 
your no, condition? No, no. Brain, brain conditions have one particular protocol. Uh, horrific infections have another. Bone infections have another. Uh, if you treat people with cancer to help them overcome some of the problems of radiation therapy, that has another. There are many, many protocols, just like there are dosages of drugs. You know, if you are a kid and you have an infection, you might get Cipro, you might get uh, 100 milligrams, uh, 125 milligrams or whatever, you might get 500 milligrams. So they, we dose according to condition and the size of the person. And that is critical to speed and success? In my opinion it is, and in my experience it is, and in most of the research it is, yes. My, my son introduced me to hyperbarics, and uh, I have been running all my life. Uh, from a freshman in high school. And I've coached two charity groups, in fact, uh, Leukemia Society and Crohn's and Colitis, and take people who have never run and really achieve their goals and change their lives by being able to do a distance event. Uh, but in the course of doing those marathons, I would run further than that. And it does take its wear and tear. And Roger advised me about this hyperbarics thing. It's just, okay, what, what can it do? And I went to Dr. Jolly's, one of his seminars once, and he was talking about well, what were the three essentials you need. You need oxygen, you need food, you need water. Um, you can live a long time without water and food. You don't live a long time without oxygen. So I said, let me give it a try. And what I found out, it speeded my recovery. And um, you feel really refreshed. Now, I'm not studying as hard as my son is with medical school, but Coming out of the chamber, there's a peaceful calm. It's like everything is just working better. It's fluid. And the theory that oxygen, oxygen is needed for every cell in the body, and you really don't get enough of it. We talk about deep breathing. One of the things which I uh, explain to my team, when you run, take deep breaths. Most of the time we shallow breathe. We just breathe here. So you never fed a full breath. Well, you run on oxygen. You wouldn't put half a tank of gas in your car and expect to go on a long trip. You want to fill it up. Well, the chamber makes you fill it up, but not just in the, in the diaphragm, in every joint and bone in the body. Um, another personal note, uh, my wife fell and cracked her kneecap. Uh, this is something that you would be in treatment for probably six, eight weeks. We had her in the chamber for one week solid, with a brace, healed perfectly, and said, what happened? The body was given what it wanted, oxygen. I usually tell a story from people who talk about it. I played water polo in college, and I knew my last year, our last season, I was never gonna be in better shape <laughs> than I was then. And we all went down to the beach, and we ran and swam and romped around. And I got out and just jogged down the beach, and even though I was lifeguarding and all this stuff, I just said, I am never going to feel this good again. You know, it doesn't get better than this, as the expression goes now. Well, one day after a couple of weeks, I came out of the treatments, and I walked out and I remembered that. I remembered that the whole body, just like doing yoga, the whole body feels activated. First, I wanted to say thank you for taking the time to explain to me the wonderful benefits of hyperbaric and how it can change people's lives. But before we go, people sitting at home, watching the show, maybe think it might be for them, don't know. What is it that you would really like everybody to know about hyperbaric treatment? Well, I would like everybody to know that hyperbaric oxygen therapy is the application of a drug called oxygen, and it's God's drug. That's where it came from. And our bodies were made to need it, to use it. It's a healing tool that creates all kinds of healing mechanisms in our body. And remember, it's God's drug. Very nice. You've been watching Medical News Network. I'm Mike Wigenstein. For further information on this subject or any other, please visit our website at medicalnewsnetwork.info. Until next time, here's wishing you good health.